the 60-in-1 IK JAMA PCB. For $40, it has Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Dig Dug, Frogger, Galaga, Burger Time, and more. And you get some other notable games such as 1942, 1943, Mr. Do and Mr. Do's Castle, Space Invaders, and Zaxxon. If you have a control panel with a trackball, then you can play Centipede and Millipede the way they were meant to be played. Also, Super Breakout and Arkanoid work much better with a trackball than a joystick. Most trackballs that I have seen start at $40, so it would have been nice to see a golf or a bowling game also included with the 60-in-1 iCade. <laughs> Finally, there are some deep-cut games such as Amadar, Crush Roller, Jumping Jack, Ladybug, Plie, Plie, Pla, whatever. Tank Battalion, Van Van Car, and many other titles that are mostly forgettable. Chances are that something in that deep cut pile will appeal to your sense of nostalgia. For example, I used to play kicks at a laundromat in a town I grew up in, and I'm pretty happy it's on this collection. Who knows, maybe Congo Bongo tugs at someone's heartstrings. Not mine though. This game sucks. Some critics of this board cite that the 60-in-1 is misleading as some of the games are duplicated, but more on this in a bit. For the most part, I stick to the classics like the Pac-Mans, Donkey Kong, and Dig Dug. I'm also using an original CGA monitor. Of the games that I have played, I have been happy with the video quality, and really, the overall video quality of all of these games seems pretty good. 1942, 1943, and Gunsmoke might be a little dark, but I never really played them in the arcade, so it's hard for me to judge. Sound. This is where things fall apart a little bit. Again, the classics seem to hold up in the quality department. For example, Donkey Kong and Galaga sound good to me. Ms. Pac-Man and Dig Dug are also good. If I had any complaints, it's that they're maybe a little too quiet. Games like Arkanoid 1942 and 1943 are too loud. Gunsmoke is even louder and sounds distorted. There are settings to change this, but more on that later. Finally, there is some noise glitchiness with Burger Time. The audio starts out messed up, but then becomes acceptable once the game starts. However, I feel like I hear a faint squeal behind the soundtrack. The 60-in-1 iCade boasts that it can save high scores, and from what I've seen, it can. Ms. Pac-Man, for example, is definitely keeping the non-default high scores. This is probably pretty easy to do since it only ever kept one high score in the first place, and it has no names or top 10 lists to deal with. Donkey Kong, on the other hand, should store multiple scores and names. On the 60-in-1, it does save scores, but it won't save names. It's very strange. I haven't explored all of the games yet, but none of the games I care about that are capable of saving names will save a name. Only the score is kept. So what about some other technicals like startup and game selection screens? When you power it up on the cabinet, you'll get a system initialization screen which counts to 60. I'm not sure if this is 60 seconds or if it's validating all 60 games, but regardless, it has to count to 60. The game selection screen and process is just okay. The three Donkey Kong games are placed next to each other, but none of the other games are grouped similarly or even alphabetically. The board allows for free play, but may have been designed with quarter munching in mind. In order to select a game, you either need to press player one start or player two start. Then you can use the joystick to navigate the menu. Once you find a game that you want to play, you can press the player one start or the player two start to play the game. I think that some of the menu design might have been put in place for credit play. I suspect that when you choose a game to play with the two-player start, it deducts two credits and then passes the two credits to the game. In Ms. Pac-Man, starting a game using the two-player button boots you to the game, but still gives you the option to play one player or two players. 
Continuing a game gets a little confusing. At the end of the game, you get sent back to the main menu. Some games allow you to reselect the game and then press a button to continue. Arkanoid doesn't. If you want to continue, you have to follow the on-screen directions. In fact, if you press the one player start, it will bring the continue counter to zero and return you back to the main menu. Exiting a game could be better too. The only way to exit a game is to lose the game, at which point you are brought back to the main menu. A button combo to abort the game like down plus two players start or something like that would have been a nice touch for those of us who are impatient. Also, the attract mode is probably as good as it can be, but it's not great. After a few moments in the menu, the 16-in-1 IK Jamma will select the next game in the list for a brief attract mode. After a few moments, it will go back to the menu, wait, and then play the next attract mode in the list. Also, you can select a game and press fire for a preview. The only way I can think to make this better would be to show the menu for a few moments and then cycle through attract modes every minute and only go back to the main menu when you press a key. And for extra credit, allow me the option to select which attract modes the 60 and 1 will display. If you already have a JAMA cabinet, then setup should not be too terribly complicated. Some multi-arcade cars require that you disable certain ground leads or disconnect one of the power leads for full functionality. Not the 60 and 1 IK JAMA PCB. Just plug it right into the JAMA harness and you're good to go. If you're retrofitting a cabinet, things can be slightly more challenging. For example, I use an old Super Pac-Man cabinet that was Frankenstein to play a bootleg Ms. Pac-Man JAMA board. These monitor wires had to be modified, and the speaker wires needed connectors for the JAMA leads. Other than that, it was only a matter of running the leads to the various buttons. As I alluded to before, there is some software configuration that you can do. There are two ways to get to this menu. The documentation tells you that you need to turn dip switch 4 on and then power on the cabinet. This is all well and good until you close up the back of your cabinet and push it against a wall. The second way, which is not documented, is to hook up a button to the test lead of your JAMA harness and push it as you turn on the cabinet. You never need to enter the setup menu, but if you don't, you'll end up with games starting with one, two, or five lives, and extra lives awarded when they may not be expected. This is because every game can be controlled with virtual dip switches. Almost all game boards have a series of switches on them that an operator could use to control various elements of the game. These can include how many quarters equals a credit, or if a quarter equals multiple credits, free play, how many points are required for an extra life, how many lives to start with, how fast your bullet is, and how fast you are, and more. And so, each one of the games in the 60-in-1 IK JAMA PCB has some level of configuration with the use of virtual dip switches. While you can guess at most of the settings, they are pretty well documented in the guide that comes with the PCB. I went through the entire list and made sure that I started with three lives. For the Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and Frogger games, I made sure that the amount of points for an extra life matched the original arcade. You can also configure some arcade settings like free play, menu music, and whether the preview has sound or not. You can configure the volume, but setting a good volume for Pac-Man will make gun smoke unbearable, and setting a good volume for gun smoke will make Pac-Man too quiet. This board does not let you set the volume of each individual game. Finally, there is a test screen for your buttons. This is great if you think you have something wired wrong or there's a short in a button. The last thing that the menu allows for is configuring which games are visible. I could see doing this to hide some of the not-so-good games on this board. I probably won't because there are only 10 pages of 6 games each, which is not too bad to scroll through. Any more than 60 and I would start curating the list. Also, I can see this is a cheap way to retrofit and restore an original cabinet. For example, I could restore my Super Pac-Man cabinet's exterior and then just enable Super Pac-Man and claim victory instead of chasing down all the original parts. With all that setup covered, remember how I mentioned that the four Pac-Mans and Galagas were duplicated? These five games happen to be on page 10, whereas the rest are randomly scattered throughout the menu. 
I believe the intention behind this was to use dip switches to set up the games mixed on page 1 through 9 with their normal arcade settings, and the games on page 10 with alternate settings. For example, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Pac-Man Jr., and Pac-Man Plus can be set to fast mode, which, of course, is the only way to play these. And Ms. Pac-Man can have hearts instead of dots. Galaga can be set for faster ships and more bullets on screen as well. And they can all be set with different amounts of lives and extra life settings. In other words, these five games are yours to create more fun experiences while having the ability to revisit the originals. So while 60 in 1 is kind of misleading, I think it's really cool that they give you five popular games to mess with and create more fun and unique experiences. So for $40, you get an easy setup and some quality classic games. The menu's a little cumbersome, there are some sound issues, Game saving is a little misleading, and continuing a game is not consistently the same from game to game. In all honesty, I'm generally only playing Ms. Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, so the other 58 games, sorry, 53, are just bonuses. Mm -hmm.